Hello everyone, my name is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial by Blau Films. And today we will be covering Sky Replacement. We recently released a few cloud packs and I'll be using those in this video. If you want to get those cloud packs yourself, you can go here to the ArtStation store. We have the Overcast cloud pack, the Clear Sky one, the Skyline one for anything that's supposed to happen above the horizon. And then we have the 400 Raw cloud pack which will mostly be used for sunny scenes. Today, however, we're going to be using mostly the overcast cloud pack. First of all, I'd like to thank Eric Alcaraz for sending the footage that we're using today in this tutorial. He sent me quite a few clips, but for this tutorial, we're only going to be looking at three of them. I've already finished all three of the sky replacements. I'll show you the before and the before on this one and the before on this one. Now all three of these technically have clouds already in the scene. One of the notes that Eric gave me is that the scene feels a bit flat to him right now and he wanted to have a bit more of a dramatic look in the clouds. Unfortunately you're never able to control what your clouds look like on set so even when you have clouds in the scene sometimes you will have to resort to sky replacement. So as you can see here, what we did is we fully replaced the sky, we integrated the trees and the horizon line back in, and we added the clouds back into the reflection of the water. The process is relatively simple. We will first use our footage to create a mat, and then we will create two separate mats, one for the sky and one for just the water. We will then go into our cloud pack and find one of the assets that we like, and composite them back in into the top and into the bottom. I would like to show you what my composition looks like so you get a better idea of what we will be doing. The red layer here is just the background video. Then there is this alpha 3 which was created by using Colorama on different sections of the image. If you're working with a scene like this that has pebbles in the water and trees with branches and very thin leaves and a massive mountain range in the background. One simple setting of Colorama is not going to give you a clean mat. If I go into this you will see what my mats actually look like. I have a white layer in the back. So as you can see I created the garbage mask for this section of the environment. I applied Colorama and I actually worked with Colorama in its color settings. I'll apply it again for you to better see why. It's very difficult to find this mountain range inside of the black and white colors. But right now, I can see that green and cyan are kind of the colors we need and that this whole section of blue, purple, red is what we should get rid of. We will be missing out this little section of the mountain in the back, but we will mask that in later with, again, a separate mask. So what I did, as you can see up top with my slide, is I moved my sliders until I got something that crunches out exactly what we need. After that, I just selected each of these points and I turned them into either black or white. The result I got here looks like this. If I turn off the mask, you'll see that we're working with a little bit of a gray edge over here. The way to solve that is I applied an exposure effect and that completely cleans up that edge. This section of the lake is the highest contrast we have in our shot. So what I did is I applied a colorama effect as well. I crunched the values until I got everything right and then I added an invert node because I was working in reverse than the final map that we're going to make. On to the next section, right here, the trees. Now the trees are a bit more tricky because you're working with very, very tiny grayscale details. But the process is the same. The only thing that I did differently for the trees to make sure that it works well is I locked the composition up here and then I double clicked this and I dragged it to the side and I started making small adjustments to the output cycle over here and I could fine tune the results by looking at the left side of the image and making changes to the right side. Back in our mat we have another section up top. This one is very similar to the other tree it's just these branches are even thinner so you have to be even more careful with the values you're working with. 
And then finally, we have this. For this section, I just went in and rotoscoped it. Sometimes it's easier to just go in, put on some music, and rotoscope a section of your image than it is to actually try to get a clean key. Even with a contrast boost, there was barely any way to distinguish this edge from the skyline. When that's the case, I'm sorry, you'll just have to go and do some roto work. To make this work, I applied a tint effect with two blacks to make sure it's fully black. And then because this is a mountain range and you don't really want that feathered masked edge, I applied a rough and edges effect with a scale of 10 and a edge sharpness of 0.11, just to more accurately blend the environment. Finally, one more thing, I added a adjustment layer to the right side with a Gaussian blur and a feather. The only thing that's doing is this side of the image needs a little bit of a light wrap and I decided to just do it inside of the mat over here. This alpha we just made, I'm using that to control an adjustment layer that I'm setting to Luma inverted, which means that the black area is going to be affected and all the white area is going to be ignored. What this adjustment layer is doing is it's a simple curves adjustment that lowers the highlights a bit. And as you can see, it basically darkens this section of the image. The reason why we're darkening this section is because the backplate we decided to introduce has a massive cloud over here. So to make it look more natural, we need to cast a shadow on this area of the image. Then up here, we go to our first yellow layer. And that's the actual image. This is the cloud asset we're using, 3874. I'm using these from the Overcast cloud pack. Um, the assets look like this. It's just a big ass folder with a bunch of images. You have the camera raw version and you have a JPEG version. Now, the good thing about camera raw is that when you go into the information, you can actually see the focal length that you had on the lens. And if you manage to communicate with your DP what it is that they shot on, you can just go through here and find one that matches somewhat accurately and use that. So let's go to the one that we're using in this example. It has a focal length of 24 millimeters. Now I know that Eric shot this on an A7S Mark II, so assuming that he's shooting 35 millimeter lens or maybe a 28 millimeter lens, then I think this would be fine for the job. The main thing you have to look out for is that you don't use something like a uh, 17 millimeter on something that clearly isn't as wide, or even worse, when you use an image that's supposed to be an 85 or something like that. So we import the image, and let me do that one more time. I'll, I'll grab a different one for the sake of this tutorial. You drag it in, and the first thing that happens is the camera raw window pulls up. Here's where we're going to make our first adjustments. The first adjustment I'm making with this footage is I'm bumping up the temperature a little bit so we get rid of that strong blue gold look. I'm lowering the highlights so we're not working with too many peaks. I'm also lowering the exposure a bit and I'm lowering the shadows. I'm gonna go into lens correction, remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. I feel like our highlights are still a little bit too strong. And I'm bumping the shadows up. And now if I were to replace that right now, you'll see that it blends pretty accurately. This image, however, is using a slight modification from the previous alpha. I duplicated alpha 3 in our project window up here, and I created this one, which I'm calling alpha 1. I'm sorry for the naming. And if you, if you go in there, you'll see that the only difference is I've added a black solid that I've dragged to the bottom so that we cover up everything from the lake. Then we have a duplicate of the image up top, which we've made into a 3D layer. I've rotated the image to match perspective of the floor plane and I've dragged it down. Now, one of the things that's important to pay attention to is how you will rotate your layer. This image up top is going to be reflected by the water in a mirrored fashion. So we have to let it fall towards us. And then we match the perspective and I've dragged it down over here. I've changed the blending mode to soft light and I've slightly lowered the opacity. 
You don't want to be working with too strong of a reflection, especially because you're already using a reflection from the previous sky in the background. I've had an exposure control so we get a bit more of a contrast boost inside of the reflection over here. This one is using Alpha 2, which again is a duplicate from the original Alpha, but now we have the black solid dragged upwards and we're only revealing the water. And that's basically it. We have the red layer as a background, we have three blue layers as alphas, two yellow layers as images, and one green layer as an adjustment. But still, it doesn't completely look right. There are two things we have to fix. First of all, this tree over here. Even though we've added as much detail as possible as we can, we're getting a little bit of a haloing effect over here, and we're still missing a few of the very, very subtle branches. And the second problem is that we have a pretty harsh edge over here in this mountain range. It's not completely blending with the environment there. For the tree, I've made a duplicate from the original layer and I've overlaid it back on top with an opacity of 75. We're still blending through some of the cloud asset, but we're also reintroducing most of the detail from the tree. The reason why you can do these things with sky replacements is that you generally speaking want to be replacing your sky with something that fits the environment naturally. We're finding an asset that matches in focal length, in color, in weather condition, and then when we add it to the back, you can always reintroduce some of the original plate back in and the scene will be basically unnoticeable. For the other problem we have on the left side, I made a duplicate of the image and I just feathered it out added a bit of Gaussian blur and I overlaid it on top with a opacity of 20%. Now let's look at the second example that Eric sent me. Again, one of the main reasons for sky replacing this shot is changing the mood. The process here is exactly the same. I created the mat for the sky, which is excluding all of the white part. I apologize, I tend to like to work with Luma inverted as opposed to Luma. Just imagine this to be white and the bottom to be black. And then we have a mat for the water down here. I imported this image and I'm Luma inverting the layer on top. Here's the same image that has been rotated towards us and is now matching the perspective of the floor. Now one of the things that I haven't done in the previous example and I haven't done in this example is motion tracking. If you have a shot that has a lot of motion, be sure to get a good track and soon I'll be releasing a tutorial where we're working with a shot that makes a full 360 degree camera turn. We will actually be going into 3D motion tracking and applying these cloud assets to a dome which we will then project back into the image. I decided to not make a full replacement in this example. If you would like to do a full replacement, it would be the same technique. You would use Colorama and you would make a selection for these trees. Then you would use Colorama, make a selection for this mountain and this big mountain here. Then you would go with the roto, you would select out this mountain over here. You would use that as one mat, create a solid, block out the bottom, reverse that mat so you have the top of the skyline. And then you would make another mat where you select out all of these pieces of rock. The only thing I decided to do here in this example is I created this mat for the bottom and I created this mat that is excluding these rocks. I've imported the sky image and I've made a mask so I could just get these bright parts. And I did the same with a slightly scaled down version of the same image to get this other piece of sun shining through this edge of the cloud. Together with the background, I just blended them in and they're matching in color. I added a bit of a curves adjustment with a boost in the red and a decrease of the highlights. For example, on this right one, it's perfectly blending with the cloud that was already in the image and now the top of that cloud is open, shining through some sun. I then took one more copy of the original layer, rotated it, put it at the bottom, soft lighted it, 61% opacity and the luma inverted it to exclude these rocks and the pebbles in the water. So that's it, a few basic compositing techniques for sky replacement. 
There are a few other things you could do to your footage right now. You could take some of these cloud assets and cut them up and then create some animation, add some turbulent displacement to the different ones. But what really matters are the basic principles of how to look at your shot, separate the different sections that would cause you a problem, and then create separate mats for each one of them, combine them, and use that as a luma, or as a luma inverted. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure to like it if you enjoyed it. Make sure to share it to someone who is a DP, videographer, visual effects artist, whoever needs this. And uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe for future content and talk to you soon. Good luck.